Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul Neal, and as always, and I'm here to speak about Mick McCarthy. Uh, yesterday marked the anniversary of Mick McCarthy's second appointment as Republic of Ireland manager. Um, he, he came in, af obviously, off the back of Martin O'Neill, doing very, very poorly after the Euros, and um, held his first press conference there um, a year ago, a year and a day now. But... Um, I'm just kind of going to go and look at, I suppose, since he's ta taken over, where are we now? And just kind of the results, the players he brought through and so on. So uh, starting off, obviously, he had to choose his first squad for the games in March, having not really met any of the players at that point. He may have known some of them from playing against them or whatever, or having them at Ipswich. But um, it, if you're looking at the whole squad... He had to meet them officially in March and we had to play against Gibraltar, which is a bit of a bogey game. We all remember the game. It was a horrendous game. Everybody hated it from the players, the managers, the fans. Jeff Hendrick, obviously, with the, with the winning goal that day. And, uh, you know, you remember a horrible day by their airport. Hor horrendous pitch. Not making any excuses. Look, we got the win and that was the end of it. But um, that was the first game under him and we got the win. Obviously, straight after the game, or I think it might have been during the game, it was announced that John Delaney was stepping down as CEO and he was given a made-up role as vice, vice executive president of the FAI or some bullshit name anyway he was given. So all that controversy started from that moment. Um, there was obviously all the scandal coming out in the Sunday Times, which Mark Toy um, investigated and that's where it all kind of stemmed from there from kind of the rise and fall well i wouldn't say the rise but the fall of john delaney and uh the demise i suppose of, of the old fai um whatever way you want to look at it so things seem to be changing a little bit now but that was that was that night mick mccarthy's first game uh back in charge as a second term as, as ireland manager and of course that happened i mean it wouldn't be the fai if it didn't happen that way would it uh, then we played Georgia and there was the obvious tennis ball protests and everything. Will it happen? Won't it happen? You know, everyone remembers that game. For that, Conor Howrahan scoring that fantastic free kick and then obviously everyone throwing the tennis balls on just before he took the free kick. Ultimately, it helped because he got the goal in the end. So it actually turned out to be a very good idea. So whoever came up with that one, fair play to you. And... Um, I think that, that that night as well was the kind of rise of David McGoldrick. I think everyone's seen how how good he actually is and how pivotal he could be for us. He was that thing that we were lacking because we were playing a lot of balls up long all the time Two players like Shane Long. Just players that aren't good at holding the ball up, whereas McGoldrick can get the ball down into him, hold it up, bring other players into play and get us further up the pitch, which we were totally lacking under Martin O'Neill. Um, now, it was obvious that David McGoldrick wasn't really getting a look in the year before he signed for Sheffield United so um, whether that was form injuries or whatever he just wasn't getting in so that's why he wasn't really getting a look in under Martin O'Neill which was you can kind of understand um, you know he, there was also the, the fact that he was including uh, League of Ireland players now into his into his well getting called up to train at least you know James Tab was in there and then Jack Byrne got in as well uh, for their performances, so it was good. It was nice to see that as well. Is that the, the lads were getting chances to, to come in and train? Um, I don't know Jack Byrne got got into the squad and played later on in the in the campaign and throughout Mick McCarthy's reign. But uh, it was nice to see James Talbot get in after the kind of horrendous year, like similar to Jack Byrne that he had, or I don't know if it was years, but he had a he had a bad time over in England uh, with homesickness and stuff like that. He did a great interview off the ball on that. Then he gone into June and we played Denmark, and you know this was an, this was one of those games where we just had everybody behind the ball and we weren't really showing a lot, um, till we went a goal or we went a goal down and then we had to just attack them for the last twenty minutes. Uh, Pierre Holberg with the goal for Denmark, the lad who plays for Southampton uh, centre midfielder, he got a goal for them and obviously Shane Duffy comes up trumps with uh, a fantastic header from an Alan George free kick who Alan George also came on uh, from the bench and I thought made a real difference and changed the game in our favour and we were unlucky maybe not to win that game 
uh, if you kind of look at it towards the end, we were the, we were kind of rallying on, and we looked like we were maybe maybe gonna gonna nick it. If we had a nick, it would have been one of the biggest results in our history to date. Um, and then we played Gibraltar at home, and you know this was one where we kind of had to redeem ourselves from the game from the the away game basically, and with Jeff Hendrick getting the goal, but. This one, you know, everyone was hoping that David McGoldrick could get off the mark, get that goal at the Aviva that he really, really needed at this point. And unfortunately, it went down as an own goal, which it was an own goal, if, you, if you're being fair. Um, but it was, it, was, it was much better from McGoldrick, seeing him getting into positions and trying to get a strike off and stuff like that. Ultimately, then, Robbie Brady ended up getting the second goal, and that was it then, uh, you know, People were saying the alarm bells were ringing there because we were just we we just don't score enough goals, and um, people were complaining that it was only two nil, which I get. Look, I understand, but it has to be realistic too. Is that you know, strikers are very hard to come by, but then again, so are goal scoring midfielders. So that's something now that hopefully we can add going forward. Um, but for those games, Robbie Brady chipped in with a goal. I suppose you could say that as well, but he's again his. Um, I suppose his lack of game time was a bit of a negative of the overall campaign, Robbie Brady, because we know how how good he can be, which was really unfortunate because you know I think everybody likes Robbie Brady, and if he was really one hundred percent fit, I think everybody would have him in there, um, and that was obviously in June. So we're going then into September, and we played Switzerland at home. And this one was very similar to the Denmark game in regards that we did try to play against it for a little while, but it, it, ultimately they, they put the pressure on us and just forced us back completely. Their wing backs were getting very high up the pitch and ours just couldn't match their level of intensity. And, you know, they got a great goal through Fabian Scher, the Newcastle centre back. Got a great goal through him. And, uh, yeah, it took until that for us to really attack them. Now, I think these are a much better side than Denmark either way. So the fact that we went at them, I I thought it showed good character. Um, The most annoying thing probably was it took James McLean 75 minutes to actually realise he was in a game. But ultimately, he gets the cross in and David McGoldrick heads home in in front of the singing section there. And what a beautiful goal that was. And I think everybody was delighted just for him to get that weighed off his shoulders that goal at the Aviva that he was really unfortunate not to get anyway and I think everybody wanted to see him get that goal and uh, you know it was delighted for him we got the draw I think everyone was happy with the draw at that stage Um, you know they were probably the fa- no, they were the favourites in the group they went on obviously to top the group but um, then a couple of days later we had that friendly against Bulgaria you know and it was a chance for people to make their debuts people like Josh Cullen Jack Byrne, he obviously got on as well. Then you had Kieran, uh, Kieran O'Hara, Mark Travers, both got a half each. James Collins came on and scored. Alan Brown, it wasn't a debut for him really, but you know it was a chance for him to stake his claim as well. He got a goal, and James Collins got a goal, and uh, Kevin Long got a goal for us. So, I mean, it was that was a good ex- experimental night. It also meant that Mick McCarthy could have a look at John Egan. I'd send her back because not too long after that, then there was the issues with uh, Richard Kyo and the drink driving and, you know, injuring himself and pretty much ruling himself out of, or ruling his international career out for good. I'd probably say at this point it's over for him, unfortunately. Um, he's obviously since been sacked by Derby, but uh, I think it was a good chance to get a look at Egan ahead of the Georgia game. And then, because it was a, a crisis then coming into October with centre-backs and, you know, whether Shane Duffy would make it as well. He was carrying a calf strain. Uh, Ultimately, he came back in. Um, Around that time as well, Aaron Connolly banging those goals against Spurs. So everyone wanted him to be called up. So he was called up out of the under-21s as well. So, I mean, there was a couple of positives, I suppose, you can take out of that. Egan, obviously, and uh, Duffy's partnership. Um, Duffy hitting the post against George was unlucky if that goes in obviously we win the game Connolly coming on too late in the game against George I think that was a telling moment in the campaign I think he'd been on maybe 10 minutes earlier I think he probably would have got a goal 
he terrorised them when he came on the pitch and you know it was a poor performance overall by our players I think everybody will admit to that and if you don't admit to that you're probably lying to yourself um, but yeah I think the game against Georgia it's not one that anyone really wants to remember is it and uh, yeah we got a draw Connie came on late not much really to say about that but then going into the Switzerland game and it was one of two cup finals at that point we realised that we had to beat either Switzerland or Denmark Again, Switzerland, but you could just tell the game really got called off because of uh, being the pitch being waterlogged as well. So you kind of got a bad feeling from the, from the off. You know, some great saves by Darren Randolph and some great saves throughout the whole campaign by Darren Randolph. Uh, you think of the Gibraltar game, the Georgia game at home, um, the save against Pulse, and there was a lot of great saves that he made that you know probably wouldn't be in the position we're in now if it wasn't for him. Um, or we wouldn't have been in the position to automatically qualify. Jeffrich gets the goal for them, and then Shane Duffy with the last minute uh, own goal, which was very unlucky. I mean, he's done everything he could to get to try and block it out. Glenn Whelan was excellent in that game as well. I thought Glenn Whelan was one of the best players throughout in the campaign um, under Mick, and I thought Mick pretty much got the best out of him for a 35 year old to come in from Hearts. And you think about it, like he was playing at Villa when he first came in and he was he was very good and then he went to Hearts and he wasn't really playing to still come in and do what he did it was pretty impressive. Um, considering Josh Cullen had such a great game against Bulgaria that he could have been, uh, well I wouldn't have said overlooked by, by Josh Cullen but he could have been replaced by him and um, I don't think anybody would have been too upset about that if that was the case but um, Seamus Coleman getting sent off as well. I think. I think that as well might, might spell the end of Seamus Coleman as a first choice right back for Ireland. I know he's the captain, but I think there's enough players in there that Mick would look at to be to be leaders. And um, you know, I think Matt Doherty, who I'll get to in a in a sec, um, should be first choice from now on. If I'm, and I'm Seamus' biggest fan, by the way. He's just saying from um, head over heart perspective. But then we had the. The game against New Zealand then, the friendly, um, in November, a few weeks ago. And this was, again was a chance for debuts. Troy Parrott got the call up. Mick McCarthy had announced that he'd be taking him and Connolly. Um, unfortunately, Connolly got injured the week before, or just on the Saturday before against Man United. He was taken off at half-time. And didn't get back on, uh, fitness-wise. And yeah, he just missed out, which was unfortunate. Look, what can you do? Troy Parrott made his debut. Leo Connor got called up as well from the under 21s. He got his debut, thought he'd done excellent as well. So, I mean, we, we won with three goals. We went the goal down. McHow had scored for them, and then we got back into it. And, um, you know, Derek Williams with a header. Troy Parrott setting up Sean McGuire for a second goal. And then Callum Robinson from a fantastic Leo Connor cross. Um, scores a header, and it was it was it was just good to see new goal scores and you know different players. Jack Byrne being fantastic. I go back to the Bulgaria game. Sorry, I kind of skipped over a little bit, but Jack Byrne was amazing when he came on that game, and Josh Cullen was fantastic through it. And again, same thing for New Zealand. Jack Byrne obviously started the game, and Troy Parrott, which was great to see, and I think it gave the Aviva a bit of a lift as well. So I do think that people need to be a bit. A bit grateful in, in a sense is that Mick is giving out these debuts as well because, you know, uh, I thought Martin O'Neill had chances to bring in players and he never did. When we had friendlies and stuff, we think of the Turkey game and the USA game and he was just kind of playing older players and just, it just didn't entice you to want to go to a game. Whereas I think under Mick, I think he brought that back a little bit, I, I thought, anyway. Um, and then, obviously, the um, the last game is uh, Denmark a couple of weeks ago, or last week, even. And, um, yeah, Braithwaite scores for them after we just dominated them throughout. You know, I thought we just looked solid throughout. And I thought the atmosphere for that game, especially, um, and the, I thought that was the, the game that really brought the fans and the players back together again. And, I think it showed, they, they put in a performance for the fans and I think that showed and I think the fans matched that. And I think 
It's unfortunate that we don't have a home game in the playoffs because if we did, I think that would, I think that would really intimidate an opposition team. And I think that we, if we can match that performance in the two games against um, Slovakia and Bosnia or Northern Ireland, if we beat Slovakia, I think if we match the performance against Denmark, we could we can win the playoffs. I'd be confident enough to say I think we can win the playoffs. I think that Bosnia are not the side they were a few years ago when we bet them for the playoffs, for the yeah, Euros last time. And Slovakia, I think I just think we're a better side than them. I think we're a better sort, side than Northern Ireland, despite what Gareth McCauley wants to say. But, uh, you know, Matt Doherty scoring the goal, and I just thought Matt Doherty was amazing that night. Um, I Maybe I skipped over Alan Brown a little bit, the fact that he got in against Switzerland. Uh, Mick McCarthy seems to really trust him now and uh, I think you might see that going forward Alan Brown getting into the first team a lot more and uh, yeah he played him on the right kind of of, the, of midfield against Denmark I thought he had, a, he had a decent enough game wouldn't be my first pick now to, to have in the team but look I'm not the manager so that's that but uh, overall you know that was the that was the cup final that we were supposed to win, and we just didn't. We just fell short. We don't score enough goals. That's our biggest problem, you know. And you think about going into the uh, the playoffs in um, in March now, that if you can have McGoldrick, Connolly, maybe Parrot's playing for a, a club in January, signs for a, a club, or starts getting a run of game, games for Spurs, maybe you've goals in your team. Then to add to that already solid structure. I mean, the least goals conceded in the in the campaign, so uh, in our group anyway, um, best defensive record. So I just think from that point of view, it was positive, but from the not qualifying automatically, it was always going to be a tough ask either way, you know, finishing ahead of Denmark or, or Switzerland. And to be in the position that we were in from the start of the group to the end of the group, I think a lot of people would have taken it. And um, I think, again, if you, if you if you wouldn't, I think you're lying. But I think the positives are the debuts of the likes of Jack Byrne, uh, Troy Parr, Aaron Connolly, um, Leo Connolly. These are players that will be there for the future now. Um, whether it remains Jack Byrne is going to get a look in at, I suppose, the competitive level still remains to be seen. I think that's, I think that's something he has to do is, is move to England to get that. But uh, James Collins uh, getting his goal. Um, Travers and O'Hara getting a lot more experience. So there is positives from that aspect. He's, he, is, he is trying to bring the younger players through a little bit. Josh Cullen as well. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. If I am, let me know in the comments. But I just think, overall, um, the fact that he was bringing players through and all was a positive. I think the positives through the mix year has been the debuts of the newer players. The f fans back on board from what they were. I think, I think the crowd lost... The fans from A, the 5-1 defeat, I, I think a lot of people were sick of Ireland and the way we played after that under O'Neill. And then the whole FAI shenanigans with Delaney and all the money and all the other bullshit, you know, with all the League of Ireland stuff and all that with Delaney so, and the FAI and, and, and all that crap. So I think there was a distance between the fans and I suppose the national team at that point. And I think Mick, by the end of the campaign, I think he brought the fans and, and the and the country, I suppose, back together again. Property is a lot more people who, I'd say, weren't going to the games, were going back to the games by the end of the campaign. And, and you know, I think it showed in the Denmark game, everybody was looking for a ticket for it because it was massive. So, um, yeah, uh, the, I suppose the negatives are the persistence of uh, James McLean under bad performances. Um, he's just gotten player of the weekend in the championship, so maybe his uh, performance will start turning around now. But I just think at the international level, his performances weren't good enough. And the fact that he was consistently getting put in when the likes of, say, Robinson and Collins and other people were getting dropped for a lot less. Uh, I know Mick's loyal and that, and I get that. But um, that would be my, my, my negative. And then my negative is, I suppose, not really going for it um, against Switzerland. I think they're the only two real negatives. I thought we gave it our all against Denmark, and I thought we gave it our are all at home to Switzerland but away from home I thought we kind of rolled over a little bit um, but uh, that's just my opinion but if I was to rate his, his overall year out of 10 I'd probably give it a 
Uh, maybe uh, I was going to say six and a half. Maybe I'm being generous if we say seven. Um, you know, a nine would have been automatic qualification and beating a Switzerland or Denmark. So is he that far away from an, from a nine? So I'd go with a seven, a seven out of ten. Um, because of the likes of the debuts and the fact that there was younger players coming through and stuff like that. But uh, now that's just been. I just had to do a video, a recap of uh, Mick McCarthy's uh, the year in total. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I might have forgotten something that maybe you're shouting at the screen now. And I might not be aware of. So let me know your thoughts in the comments as always. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't below. And uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video as it helps the channel grow. Um, and if you have anything you'd like me to do a video on or, or sit down with the lads and discuss, um, drop, drop in the comments. We love hearing what you guys want to hear us talk about, topics, suggestions, and so on. Thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you guys soon, all right?